So, continuing on with uh, application security threats, um, the good old back door. Uh, uh, back doors, trap doors. Um, now, <clears throat> uh, often, uh, these may start out as um, a uh, maintenance hook um, in development of an application that um, the the programmer, the developer wants to get uh, in and out of the program uh, fairly quickly as uh, uh, perhaps most of it is uh, already programmed and developed but we've got the uh, uh, the, the need to uh, continue on to be specific about how it's operating um, you don't want to uh, sign in sign out start up shut down that sort of thing so being able to uh, drop into um, uh, a uh, maintenance mode a programming mode a um, the ability to access various parts of the programs without going through uh, all of the normal access controls is uh, something that developers want. Um, that's okay in development, but you need to ensure that you've taken them out before uh, you release the thing. If you know something with a, uh, a maintenance hook um, is released into production, well, then that becomes uh, you know a backdoor, a trapdoor. Um, a means uh, for somebody who shouldn't have access to gain access and uh, frequently very high levels of access higher than any uh, user should have to the program um, uh, then again you know sometimes it's simply an error a mistake a vulnerability uh, that gets exploited in in some way so that uh, uh, somebody can get access um, so, uh, you know, they, they come in a variety of forms. Uh, race conditions. Um, a situation where two processes are operating at the same time. When we have multitasking going on in whatever way it, it may work. Uh, when uh, the, the end result is going to depend upon which process finishes first and so in a sense they're kind of in a race as they you know who gets who get who's on first and uh, because of that possible inconsistency um, that is going to leave a vulnerability and and uh, you know possibly a problem with um, integrity of the operation the results whatever um, so uh, yeah that uh, always a uh, you know, bad security situation when you've got inconsistency. And uh, as mentioned, we can have these race conditions even in situations where we have multi-core architecture if we're not careful. And so, you know, we do have to be careful in any uh, situation that we know um, either, you know, which is going to finish first or that um, a stopper is, is put in place uh, to say you are not not allowed to complete until this other process uh, does um, ensuring the integrity of the situation covert channels and we'll probably look at covert channels uh, from oh uh, operations um, uh, likely um, uh, different types of covert channels uh, covert uh, storage channels which is basically very similar to object reuse uh, COVID, uh, covert timing channels where um, the, the operation of a system gives away information about what's going on inside that system and, and sometimes can be used even to signal uh, sort of a low bandwidth signal that data um, is uh, being done um, in a sense a covert timing channel the uh, uh, side channel attacks on uh, cryptographic equipment where um, by looking at the uh, the power consumption um, uh, we can tell something about 
um, what is going on in there and, and sometimes even obtain information about the, um, uh, the key uh, by looking at that. So, um, yeah, covert channels, um, uh, data contamination. Uh, and, I mean, you know, we talk about integrity and there's all kinds of ways of, of data contamination from carelessness on the part of our operators to, uh, you know, garbage in, garbage out, you know, having bad data in the first place. Uh, uh, again, looking at the, uh, by the uh, formal security model, um, uh, you know, trusting too much on, on information that is not accurate enough for us. Uh, you know, all kinds of issues there of, of data contamination. Um, garbage collection, uh, again, in terms of covert storage channels or object reuse. If we are no longer using this piece of data, um, do we, uh, you know, rather than simply saying, okay, this space is available, uh, zero out that, uh, that information. Um, overwrite uh, that section of uh, storage or disk space uh, so that that is no longer available to anybody in any way. Um, metadata. Information about our information. Data about our data. Um, again, we, you know, uh, we may be thinking, oh, well, you know, we have a situation where we, you know, uh, don't give somebody access to the information itself, but the metadata, you know, how many records have we got in our system is, is part of the metadata. Uh, it, you know, it tells people something about what we're doing. Um, uh, interestingly, uh, signals and, and communications intelligence these days, an awful lot of that is simply traffic analysis. Who is talking to who? Even if the uh, communications is itself encrypted, um, you know, that, you know, who's talking to who gives us uh, a lot of information. Um, and so metadata can be used to, to obtain a lot of information that uh, uh, possibly people shouldn't have. Um, uh, distributed computing. Again, we talked about that in uh, security architecture, system architecture, network arch architecture. Um, and again, the different forms of distributed computing called different things, called time-sharing, called cloud, you know, whatever, all boiling down to using somebody else's computer. Um, and uh, the, the different protections that we need to ensure are in place or put in place if they are not. Uh, so we have to uh, take special precautions in that kind of distributed computing environment and, and if we are using that type of situation.